Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Barbenheimer Part 2, where we're going to talk about the film Oppenheimer, which is based on this book, American Prometheus. Stick around and listen, we're going to drop the bomb. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to sit around and talk about Oppenheimer, which is the new Christopher Nolan film based on this book, uh, American Prometheus. I haven't read the whole thing. I'm about 200 pages in, but I've gleaned what I can about his early life and his early years, ladies and gentlemen. So Oppenheimer, of course, is the man who invented the atom bomb, uh, who was in charge of the Manhattan Project. It wasn't just him. It was a group of um, other um, Jewish uh, scientists uh, like himself. Uh, there was people like Leo Zillard, and there was um, Hans Berta, and then there was, of course, um, what's the name of that other guy? Edward Teller. He was the, the basis for the character of Doctor Strangelove, who was in the Stanley Kubrick film. And there was a whole group of um, you know Jewish scientists who uh, basically blessed the world with the atom bomb in the 1940s. So um, you know this film examines, I guess, the kind of ethical and moral dimensions of you know, um, you know, creating the bomb. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, in, in many ways, um, Oppenheimer is a war criminal. I think um, it would have been if the, uh, the Japanese and the Germans won, he would have been tried as for a war crime for sure, but obviously they didn't. So he, he was never tried, um, uh, at least by, uh, for any kind of war crimes. Um, you know, um, but like, you know, I mean, was the uh, building of the atom bomb inevitable? I mean, Possibly, I think it might have been. You know, the film also covers, um, you know, Albert Einstein a bit, whose kind of discoveries, you know, with general relativity theory and you know, study of the atom, early study of the atom with people like uh, Pauli and Heisenberg and people like this. Um, this enabled the technology um, to well, enable the mathematics and the physics to create, you know, the atom bomb. So you know, it's like in the 20th century. Um, with the revolution of Einstein, which created a whole new uh, paradigm for physics, uh, you know, this enabled this, this, this kind of nightmare, this technological nightmare to be born. Um, but obviously someone had to actually do it. Um, and, uh, you know, Robert Oppenheimer was a very strange individual. Uh, what can I say about him? Um, well, he was sort of a psychopath in many ways, but he was also a genius. Uh, like, you know, he was a genius of physics, um, but there were a lot of those people about. Um, he went to Germany uh, early on and met Heisenberg and studied quantum mechanics, um, you know, with people like uh, Pauli and, uh, you know, uh, Fermi and all these other famous physicists from the period. So he knew all these people and uh, he was one of the first American, young Americans to go over to Europe and really immerse himself in this new quantum mechanics theory, uh, which was, a good, you know, the theory itself is still bizarre to this day. It's got to do with like, you know, elemental particles and things being in two places at once and things being uh, quantum entanglement, which is, um, you know, things being connected across vast, you know, faster than the speed of light kind of communication. Um, you know, things that people to this day don't fully understand. Um, you know, there's obviously quantum computers that are around at the moment that's based around this theory. So it's an incredibly complex and strange um, theory of physics that was being developed in the early part of the 20th century. One of the products of this, um, you know, I guess, discoveries in theoretical physics was, uh, you know, the ability to create uh, an atom bomb. Um, Einstein and uh, Zillard warned President Roosevelt that the Nazis could develop a bomb um, uh, of this nature, but they never did. Uh, though Heisenberg was kind of working on it, but for whatever reason, um, they never went ahead and fully uh, realised it. Whether it was because Hitler didn't believe in it or um, didn't think it would work, we don't know. I mean, maybe he had a little bit more ethics, but the Americans and uh, Oppenheimer certainly didn't, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And they um, uh, were working on it pretty much as soon as Japan uh, bombed America, uh, which is in late 1941. They, the Manhattan Project began in earnest, uh, even though they'd been working on it a little bit before. And Oppenheimer was put in charge of developing the weapon. So he worked for three years in Los Alamos. You know, he was a kind of, um, you know, a physicist student at Caltech and at Berkeley, and he had a kind of ranch in uh, New Mexico and uh, near Los Alamos, and that's where he wanted to, you know, build the bomb, and uh, the U.S. military got behind him, and they built a town there for him, a town at Los Alamos, and that's where they built the atom bomb. It took them three years, and obviously they, uh, of course, uh, Oppenheimer couldn't wait to um, drop it on uh, Nazi Germany, but the war in Germany uh, ended 
before um, you know he could invent the bomb and he could have all that fun of you know killing uh, innocent women and children in Germany. He really wanted to do that, but he only got to do deal with Japanese. So he was only able to drop it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and basically burn um, a quarter of a million people alive. And obviously, uh, that many people also died from after effects. So you know he is he's a terrible war criminal. Um, but you know it's an interesting film, uh, you know, and he is a kind of genius, obviously, uh, uh, in many ways. But the film does deal with the ethical questions of this, and um, you know, I think it's a really, really good film. Christopher Nolan is a great filmmaker, and um, you know, he delves right into all this situation. But one of the most fascinating things about Oppenheimer that a lot of people didn't know is that you know he pretty much was a, a member of the, the Communist Party, even though you know the exact the film itself haggles a lot whether he was a member. But it, just about every friend he had. Um, was a kind of uh, Communist Party member, um, you know, uh, outside of you know some people in the physics departments we worked with. Uh, some of them were, some of them were, those people were conservative, but um, you know he was definitely a communist. Um, it seems, and he may have been involved in leaking um, atomic secrets to the Russians, um, who were allies. You know, up when the Nazi uh, Soviet pact um, collapsed with the invasion of Russia by Nazi Germany, you know, obviously then. Uh, technically, the Russians were, were the allies, uh, well, they joined the allies. So, you know, it's a very complex uh, situation. But it seems to me that Oppenheimer viewed the creation of the atom bomb in, in a globalist way. He was a globalist. While being a communist, you know, uh, he was also a Zionist. Uh, but he believed that through creating this terrible weapon that it would end war because, you know, people would see how terrible it is and he believed that it would bring in one world government. Does that sound familiar, ladies and gentlemen? He wanted the one world government. Um, surprise, surprise. And he believed that the nuclear weapon was the key to it. And that, you know, he believed that the Russians should also have the nuclear secrets. So that one, everyone's got the, the atom bomb. So no one can really use it because it's so destructive. But he did believe it should be tested one or two times and it should be, you know, demonstrated, you know, at the end of World War II. He believed in that. And he did support it being dropped um, on, um, you know, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki because he's a cunt, um, you know, instead of just dropping it in the ocean or somewhere, some small island that's uninhabited and saying, look what we can do now. You could have done that. I think the Japanese would have probably surrendered them. But anyway, the decision was made to, to murder all those people. And um, so, you know, it's a very interesting um, film and it, it does raise the question, you know, that this attempt um, to bring in one world government using a kind of weapon of mass destruction had happened before, and that was the atom bomb. And then, obviously, Edward Teller, uh, soon after uh, the, the invention of the atom bomb, he created the hydrogen bomb, um, which in the uh, late 1940s, early 1950s, which was even more destructive than the atom bomb. So this attempt um, by Jewish intellectuals to kind of create uh, a one-world government through um, you know, using weapons of mass destruction, this is really the first incident. And what happened with COVID is something, um, you know, that, that, that's something this has been done before, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, you see that at the moment now, they with COVID, they tried to create a kind of one world government situation and that, you know, they really uh, have no um, qualms about using weapons of mass destruction. But the thing is, that's interesting with Oppenheimer is that because of his ties to communism, when the war ended, and obviously we entered the Cold War, and then we entered the 1950s, there was the whole thing with McCarthy and that whole anti-communist thing. So instead of bringing the world together, um, under a one world government, under a one nation that obviously Oppenheimer spoke about a lot, um, you know, you see that, um, you know, in, if anything, uh, uh, there was a rising nationalism in America in the 1950s and there was a very, very strong anti-communist mood. And that even came for Oppenheimer and he had his um, security clearance uh, revoked um, due to his ties to the Communist Party in the 1930s in uh, Los Angeles and other places. So, you know, it's a very interesting film. It shows him to be a traitor, a communist traitor, a war criminal, uh, a psychopath, because he also tried to poison his, um, uh, you know, what's it called, his teacher with an apple. He had a little apple that's not, um, that he tried to give his professor who was annoying him that he poisoned. That Luckily, the professor never ate it, but he was nearly charged um, with attempted murder um, by, uh, you know, the uh, by the police, and he was going to be kicked out of Harvard University. But his father, who was a wealthy Jewish guy, came and threw some money around and made it all go away, so to speak. So... Uh, he donated money to Harvard and they got, they didn't expel him. And uh, I think there were some donations to the police and trust, ladies and gentlemen. So that's it. It's a very complex film. I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by the life of Oppenheimer, who, who is a kind of fascinating genius. He's a kind of Prometheus. He sort of steals fire and creates this terrible weapon. 
And the difference between, I guess, war criminals, you know, say Nazi war criminals or, you know, Japanese war criminals, is that, you know, Oppenheimer's war crimes are a gift, you know, that's forever, you know, because humanity is now doomed to live in the shadow of the atom bomb and the hydrogen bomb um, due to the work that these psychopaths did at um, the Manhattan Project. So we're all sort of, you know, and maybe one day someone will push the button and that will be the end of everybody and we'll have that cunt, Oppenheimer, to thank for it. So until then, just go see Oppenheimer. It's about a very important topic. It's a very good film. Probably should win the Academy Award. And uh, the film stars Killian Murphy uh, as Oppenheimer. He really deserves an Academy Award. He lost an incredible amount of weight um, uh, and, uh, you know, he gives this kind of tortured performance that kind of, you know, dances along the line of sort of, I guess, psychopath and genius, um, and he does it very well. And, um, you know, and it is a great film uh, about an important topic, uh, about many important topics, really. So, you know, Christopher Nolan has done a stellar job, and I do hope that it gets recognised, and I imagine it will, um, you know, at the uh, Oscar season and the award season in, in Hollywood and uh, in the film industry. So there it is. That's the report. That's the full Barbenheimer nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. Go see both films. Make up your own mind and uh, tell us what you think. Thanks.